Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Hello, derpiest dude. How are you doing? Let's see. I think all the audio is good. Cool. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working on um, adding controller support to Gunforged, which is something that I haven't done before. Um, adding controller support, that is. So um, it should be kind of fun. I'm expecting it to be relatively easy, like most things are with this beautiful engine. But we will see. So the other thing is I don't usually play games with a controller either, so I'm going to have to figure out what the best practices are here. But we're going to start with the basic implementation today, and then we'll refine as necessary in the future, which I'm sure future state will involve having a multiple different controller layouts to choose from or rebinding controller buttons and all that stuff. But that's going to be a lot to get done today, so we're not going to do that. And the cat is going to be disrupting the stream, so just pardon him. Hello, Kezek. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Fefinex. Yo, what is up? Not much. What's up with you? All right. So controller support. Let's figure out how we're going to do this. So I think obviously first, um, Actually, before I start, you can wishlist Gunforged on Steam. The link for that is in the description below. And uh, you can take my Godot 4 Udemy course if you want to learn how to make a game in the Godot engine. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start. So I think obviously first thing to do is going to go into the input map here. And we're going to extend. What is this doing? We're going to extend the existing actions here. Thank you for the course, it's awesome. You're welcome, Alexi, thank you. Thank you for taking it. So moving left, we want, can I use, I have the joypad or the Xbox controller plugged in right here. One second. All right, so I have the controller plugged in. So if I just do an input, joypad axis zero, left stick right. Well, that sounds good to me. All right, that's easy. Let's do up now. Axis one, left stick up. Yep. I'm glad that it provides like a human readable name because I don't know what axis one means, but it says left stick down. So that must be correct. Oh, did I do? I did this input wrong here. Left stick left, left stick up, down, right. Okay. So, um, I guess I should use the, what are these called? Are these bumpers or triggers? The L1 and R1. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's do click left. We'll do this button. Left shoulder, okay. And then for right, we'll do that one. So right shoulder, left shoulder for shooting. I think that should be fine, right? Um, is that typically how it goes? What is typically the movement? Um, hmm, I might have to look this up. Anyone know what the typical, uh, which stick is used for movement typically? It's the left stick, right? I think the left stick is, well, I'm sure I'll figure it out when I start playing it if it feels weird. Left stick for move. Okay, that's what I thought, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so roll. So this is the tricky one, right, because I think a lot of people don't like to take their hands off of the uh, off the keyboard, but um, or off the control or off the analog sticks. But let's try it with the uh, bottom action here, Xbox A. We'll try A first and see how that feels. Interact. Um, I guess we'll do Y. Debug menu, I don't need that one. Player information. So player information, uh, maybe we can just use the start button. Or actually... Maybe we'll do B, because that's going to be a very common thing. This game doesn't have many actions. You can see this is my entire input map, so... Um, 
yeah, there's not really a whole lot going on here. So I have a lot of buttons free on the controller. Okay, um, so we might have to configure then um, some dead zones here, actually. So how do I do that? Is there a way to configure the dead zones? Okay, interesting. Well, let's see, that should just work out of the box. Okay, so obviously there's no aiming in place, but you can see I'm using the controller. Well, I guess you can't see that. I'm using the controller here and it's working pretty good. So I haven't, uh, I didn't try the dash though. I'm assuming that's gonna work. Okay, that doesn't feel too bad, yeah. I mean, maybe it will once I put the aiming in place. So the aiming is gonna be the tricky thing. So let's take a look at the cursor. And basically this is our cursor class here. I got some errors here. Maybe I got to clean the solution. Left stick and D-pad. Oh, good call. Yeah, I should add D-pad, huh? I don't know why Ryder here is showing me errors. I think I can ignore those because the game builds just fine. Okay, so uh, in here, this is the cursor. So... I think instead of, I'm going to be a little bit lazy with controller support here, and instead of making the menus like fully navigable with the controller, I'm just going to make it so that the cursor appears and you can aim the cursor with the controller. And maybe I'll introduce some snapping and stuff to make it easier, but um, implementing like actual controller navigability in the menus I have is going to be very painful. So I'm going to try to avoid that. Um, okay. So, I'm trying to figure out where the cursor position is being set here. Root global position is equal to root get global mouse position. Okay, so there it is. So the problem here is we need to actually determine the position based on... Um, what you call it? Based on whether you're using a controller or not. So, how am I going to do this? Um, let's look at the input class and see what's available to us. Just familiarize myself. Here we go. So, get joy, guid. So, I imagine that get joy, guid returns default gamepad otherwise. So there has to be a way to detect. Firstly, I think there's gonna have to be some logic here because a lot of people leave controllers plugged in. And so I don't want to like force people into, you know, a controller play style if they want to play with the mouse and keyboard while they have a controller plugged in. So when it comes to aiming, I think what I'll have to do is detect whether the last input that was received was from the mouse or from the controller, and then use that to determine how to position the cursor. So, is joy button pressed? Is action, let's see, get. Get magnetometer, hmm. Get gyroscope, gravity, current. Oh, get connected joy pads. Okay, that's gonna be useful. So we have get connected joy pads. And then what else do we have? Flush buffered events, add joy mapping, okay. So basically I need to listen for some inputs here. Sorry, I just gotta think for a little bit about how this is going to happen. So joy connection changed. I wonder if I can leverage that, so let's see. Well, let's do this first. So public override void unhandled input. 
And then we want to get the input event here. So input event. So in here, I'm going to want to detect what the last used device was. So maybe I'll call this was controller used last. All right. So unhandled input. So am I going to need, let's do an aiming here. So because the mouse position doesn't need to be in an input map, but I think the joystick will need to be for the aiming. Again, I've never done this before, so I'm just kind of figuring out my way as I go. So let's add a new action. Let's do, um, no, because then I'd have to do all four directions, right? That doesn't sound right to me. Or is it? Let's see what we got here again. So get joy axis, device, joy axis right left trigger right trigger okay so i can actually just get it in here so i guess i'll have to process i'll have to do this as part of the process method then So get joy axis, device int. So I'm going to need to get to the device. What here returns an int? Get axis, get connected joy pads. Here we go. Okay, well, let's do that then. So I might, un I'm unfortunately probably going to have to do this every frame. Or we can use the signal. So perhaps we can use a signal here. So let's create a ready method here. Let's do input dot joy connection changed plus equals on joy connection changed. Okay, and then let's create a function for that at the bottom. And what arguments come into that signal here? Device and connected. Okay. So we've got our int device and then connected. Bool is connected, I guess. Okay. So we'll do if is connected. Let's create a private int up here, which is the uh, controller device. I don't, it's probably not proper to call it ID, but that makes more sense to me. So we're going to call this device ID or device index, perhaps is more appropriate. Yeah, let's do device index. Oops. Okay. So if is connected, we're going to say device index is equal to or rather controller device index is equal to device index. Else if not is connected. Well, I don't need to do that. Else, yeah. Else if device index is equal to the controller device index that's currently connected. Controller device index equals negative one. So we'll set it to negative one to indicate that it's there's nothing connected at first. Why is this ready method not working? Because I already have a ready method. Let's get my programming done correctly. Why doesn't it like this assignment here? Oh, because it's a long. So the, the Godot docs show it as being an int for the device, but it's actually a long. So that's why it's giving me an error. So there's our long. Okay. Excellent. So what are we doing here? 
Right, so in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new method. So I'm gonna say root.globalPosition is equal to get cursor global position. And in this method, we will do the logic that's required to determine if we're using a controller or a keyboard. So private void get cursor global position. Okay, so we're gonna say if controller device index is less than zero, then we're going to set it to the mouse position else and we're going to need to extend this else as well because again i want to include that logic of when uh you know detecting whether you use the keyboard or the controller last but we're going to do it the simple way first which one is better c sharp or gd script for godot 4. uh you can't go wrong with either one can't go wrong with either one um, I actually used GD script for the most recent game jam, which I have a devlog coming out for in a couple weeks. Um, and the reason being because, um, I just wanted to use GD script. <laughs> GD script 2.0 is, is really fun to use. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and then C sharp, you know, it requires a little bit more setup up front but there's a bunch of nice benefits you get with that. Being able to use traditional object-oriented programming practices is a big one, um, and the more robust typing system. And also, you can use um, a collection of NuGet packages if you want. So those are the benefits of C-sharp, but I think GDScript just overall is faster, easier to prototype. You don't have to leave the editor to write your code, and um, it's just generally faster. Not in terms of performance, but in terms of development. If I come from Unity, should I learn GDScript? You can. Um, GDScript is not difficult if you're already familiar with the programming language. It's pretty easy to pick up. Um, but you can also stick with C Sharp. So it's all, it's all a matter of like what you feel like you want to do. You should be aware that there's some limitation with C Sharp with Godot 4. I think web exports, if I'm not mistaken, don't work with C-sharp. And um, what's the other problem with C-sharp? Oh, they don't, uh, C-sharp is not exportable to mobile, I think, or maybe at least iOS. There's, I may not be correct on the exact details, but there's definitely some restrictions on C-sharp at the moment in Godot 4 in terms of what platforms you can export to. So just be aware of that before you commit to it. But if you're just building a game just for fun, you don't have any plans of releasing it or anything, you can use whatever you think is is most comfortable for you. Hello, SXG. Welcome, welcome. Is Godot capable of making a chess game? Oh, yes, for sure. Like, would single player AI be impossible to do? No, nope, not at all. Yeah, you can make any game that you want in Godot, aside from, you know, like a triple A blockbuster, but you wouldn't be able to do that as a solo developer anyway, so. Yeah, pretty much any game you can think of, especially in 2D, you can do in Godot. No problem. All right, so if our controller device index is less than zero, then we've got this root global position is equal to root get global mouse position. Otherwise, what we're going to do is let's do this. Let's get the... Um, is there a way to get the, the center of the screen? So um, get canvas... Or get camera, maybe. What are these? Uh, what are these emojis flying up in the <laughs> in the uh, chat hearts and whatnot? That's pretty cool. How do I get the? There's a way to get the center of a camera, which means I gotta get the current camera somehow. Get tree dot uh, get viewport maybe. Get viewport dot get camera 2d dot center does this work so var center is equal to that um and then why am i grabbing the center because what i want to do is i want to say let's create a new variable up here or a constant rather so private const float um let's do controller cursor distance 
We'll just set it to 100. And then... Oh, and also this is wrong. I need to return out of here. So we're going to return a vector to. So our center, we're going to grab the center of the screen and then we're going to take the direction of the controller. So that means that we're going to do input dot get joy axis. And we're going to use the device controller device index. And then we're going to use the joy axis right X. So we're going to say var controller X. And of course, the API is inconsistent, so that ne needs to be cast to an int, even though it's a long. And then var controller y is equal to basically the same thing here. Except we're going to do the right y. And then we're going to say var controller direction is equal to... Is there a simpler way to get this direction? Oh well, I'm already this deep. New vector to controller dot x, controller dot y, dot normalized. So there's our controller direction. And then we can return. What am I returning? Returning the center plus um, controller direction times controller cursor distance. So I have no clue if that's going to work. I guess this else isn't necessary. Thank you, Ryder. All right, I have my doubts that that's going to work, but we're going to check it out. All right, so it looks like that signal is not being connected or not being emitted at the beginning of the game, which I thought it would be, but I guess that makes sense that it's not. So in here, on joy connection change to this one right here. If I just do a gd.print, I guarantee you this is not printing. Face orange biting nails. <laughs> it just shows up as a placeholder, like a broken image in chat. Okay. So let's see. Yep. So there's no print statement. So when the cursor gets loaded, I actually have to get all the connected joypads. So let's do that then. So let's create a private void. Um, ah, input. I'm not liking this joypad input so far. It's kind of, uh, kind of messy. I'm going to do something very simple. Let's do configure controller private void configure controller and then we're going to basically say var joypads is equal to input dot get connected joypads and then we're going to grab the last one. Now is this going to work I should probably check if joypads dot length greater than zero. Um, then we're going to say controller device index is equal to joypads. And then we're going to grab the last element of the array. Okay. All right. So let's see if that works now. Okay, look at that. So it's not working properly, but I don't know if you can see that at the bottom of the screen. Oops. Ah, okay. Let me try it again. <laughs> um, let's see. Good evening, uh, PS Bertag. PSP BR tag. Welcome, welcome. Why aren't you using GD script? I just like C sharp better. That's all. What text editor are you using? I'm using Rider. It's a C sharp IDE. I used to use VS Code, but it was slowing down a lot. And Rider is much faster for C-sharp projects, so... 
All right, so there's my cursor. It's not at the center of the screen like I thought it would be. So that's very odd. Also, it's completely detached from where the player's aiming. So I guess the cursor is not the appropriate place to put this aiming code. All right, we're going to need to think about this a little bit more carefully here. Um, I'm, maybe I'll just get the cursor logic working, or maybe... Um, you know what? This is probably going to be better placed in the player input manager. So in here, public void get aim position. My aim position. So yeah, let's move all this code. I suppose I should have started there, but it's been a while before I've been in this code, so I... To be honest, I forgot this player input manager existed. Oops. It's okay, we can just move all this stuff over. The problem is... This player input manager is attached to the player. I might, I might actually have to think about how I'm doing this a little bit more. Because this player input manager is attached to the player, but if the player dies or gets removed from the tree, then I'm going to lose my ability to do input. With the cursor, at least. So I may have to split up the various different states of the cursor input. Goodness, how many freaking things did I do already? And the cat is crying because I had to kick him out because he was being annoying. Okay, this, we're just going to change this back to root.getGlobalMousePosition. This is going to be, yeah, this player input manager is probably going to need to be changed. Okay, one second. All right. I'm making a little game to practice after taking your course on Udemy. Could I tag you on Reddit or Discord sometime to show you how it's going? Of course. Um, not on Discord, but on Reddit or um, what you call it? Twitter. Um, I'm Firebelly at both places. So yeah, you can you can tag me on Reddit or Twitter. Okay. Um, so yeah, the problem is I'm going to need to let's let's just get the controller working first and then I'll figure out what needs to happen in terms of supporting controller input across the game whether or not the players in in the scene or not. Most likely this controller stuff, I guess I could move this controller stuff to a singleton and auto load. I think that sounds good to me. Let's do that. So let's call it global input manager. We'll put that in scenes, auto load, save. A lot of people ask why I create just empty scenes instead of just using the script. And the reason for that is because um, I will often add extra nodes that are required. So it's just easier to start with this base rather than, you know, now I need to add a node. So I got to go create a script or got to go create a scene, attach the script to the scene, undo the auto load, redo it. Right. I just like to start with the base node scene and then just extend it as necessary. Scripts auto load. So 
So game dot game object. No, game dot auto load. All right, so we've got our global input manager here. Um, okay, so we got our global input manager. What are we doing? I don't need this scene because I don't have any nodes yet. I don't need this either. <laughs> so I guess once again, we're going to have to move, move all this code over. Well, this is how it goes sometimes. It's very clear I don't know what I'm doing in this instance because I've never designed a system like that. So just figuring it out as we go along. All right. I'll do Twitter sometime somewhere down the line. Thanks. You're welcome. Port cat, kick him back in. <laughs> kick. I kicked him back in. He's he's back. Hello, Zaijin. Welcome back to the stream. Good to see you again. Okay. So once again, just copying everything back over here. I think this is the final move. The more I think about it, the more I'm feeling good about this global input manager. Okay, so we've moved everything over. What are we missing? So get cursor global position. Let's do get. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of this for now. And let's make this a public static vector two. And then get viewport. Yeah, so I need to create an instance here. So private static global input manager instance. We can do instance get viewport. Let's do public override void notification. I guess I shouldn't have deleted that notification. Int what? We're going to set the instance to this. Why doesn't it like this? There's no suitable method to override. because I spelled notification wrong. All right. So we're going to have this static uh, method, which is get cursor global position. And I'm going to call I'm going to rename this to get controller global position. This controller device index. So let's make I guess we'll make this a static might as well. Okay, cool. And we can make this static as well. Since it's a singleton after all. All right, so we've got this get controller global position. So let's go back to our cursor and let's just do this real quick. Let's just do root.globalposition is equal to global input manager dot get controller. I guess this should be get controller cursor global position. Okay, and then we'll get rid of this line. And now I have to add it as an auto load. So let's build it first. Okay, project, project settings, auto load. Let's go ahead and load that in. Scenes auto load, uh, where is it? Global input manager .tscn, add. All right, let's take a look. Okay, still the same problem. So it doesn't know what the center of the screen is. So I need to figure out um, why it doesn't know what the center of the screen is. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, so you'll notice that if I just leave the controller not holding it, that as I move around the screen, the cursor is is moving. I might have to, so I, I'm probably going to have to convert between screen coordinates, world coordinates and screen coordinates, or maybe I don't. I wonder, hold on a second, I need to do some reading of the docs. 
The hardest part is always figuring out the actual details of the implementation, where things should go. Yes, for sure. Doing a refactor of one of my old projects that, that's got some strange utilization of inheritance and even just deciding what component should do what is a pain. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes things are so entangled and, and the system's not super extensible that it's just like, it. yeah, you kind of have to just hack your way through the through the jungle until you get somewhere. Hello, Link SX. Welcome, welcome. All right. So let's take a look at this then. So if we take a look at this code, get screen center position. So, oops, that doesn't take me. So let's go to get screen center position. Let's read what this does. Returns the center of the screen from this camera's point of view in global coordinates. Okay, so that's in global coordinates. So the problem then, that's, this is why it's not working, is because this cursor is a canvas layer. So this does not inherit the transforms of everything else. This is like in its own little transform world. So what I need to do is I need to convert the global coordinates of the screen position from the current camera, I need to convert that to coordinate space in this layer. So that's that's what I need to do. So I think I can leave this method as it is. So this will be in, in world coordinates. So the cursor is the one that needs to be responsible for transforming that. And I think what I need to do is I simply just need to do transform times that. That's probably brutally wrong, but we'll see. No. Let's look at a different component where I'm messing with transforms. I need to sit down one of these days and actually learn how transforms work because um, I basically just flounder around with transforms until I get what I want, which is not efficient. So let's do get canvas dot. Well, this is the canvas transform, right? Canvas. This is a canvas, so or a canvas layer. Get viewport canvas transform. OK, well, maybe we could do that then times global input manager. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so it looks like there's no dead zone. So if I if I let the uh, controller go back to zero, zero position. So if I'm doing this, how am I doing? Oh, I can't see the camera. Okay. This one, if I, if I reset this to zero, um, there's no dead zone. And so it's detecting like very imperceptible differences in angle and it's sending the cursor all over the place. So that needs to change. Although I can already see how this is going to feel pretty good on controller. Obviously the aiming doesn't work, but okay. So we got to figure out how to add dead zones. And then also how did twin stick shooters usually do this? Do they just, do they do what I'm doing here, which is just like restrict the cursor to a certain area around, around the player? Or can you actually like point it anywhere on screen? Anyone know? Looks like the cursor is stealing the position of the parent or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the opposite problem. So yeah, so when we're in this menu, I don't know if you can see the cursor very well here, but the idea is that this cursor will just become free and you'll be able to use the cursor to select, select things.
I've seen some where you have the option to choose if the cursor is restricted or not. Okay. Enter the Gungeon does it so you can point anywhere. Interesting, so it becomes like a literal cursor on screen, basically. I'll have to give Enter the Gungeon a try and see how their controller input works. Just straight up plagiarize uh, from Enter the Gungeon. Okay, so let's figure out dead zones. I thought it used to be the case that you could set dead zones in the input map. Is that... Oh, wait, here it is. Ah. But there is a dead zone already. Oh, wait a minute. So I'm, the reason is because I'm not doing it through the input map. Oh, interesting. Wait a minute. Is that dead zone like super? Oh yeah. Oh, maybe a 0.5 dead zone is fine. Yeah, I thought that would be kind of rough, but it's actually fine. Okay, so the reason I'm not getting any dead zone in my aiming is because I'm getting the aim direction just purely from the input API. And it doesn't look like there's any way to apply a dead zone here. So I'm just going to take the easy route and define an aim set of actions. Can I define, let's see. Joypad axes. Yeah, okay. I think I'm just going to have to do uh, aim up. Let's call it controller aim up. Controller aim down. If anyone has a better idea of how to handle the dead zones. I'm all ears, but I think this is the going to be the easiest way to configure dead zones here. So aim up, right stick up, aim down, right stick down, aim left, right stick left, and then aim right, right stick right. Okay. Cool. All right. So now in here, what I can do... Let's see, input.get action strength. Isn't there like a get uh, input get vector? Here we go. Perfect. Okay, I can use this input get vector. So let's do direction is equal to input get vector. And then let's see. So negative x is controller aim left controller aim right controller aim up and controller aim down okay there's my direction so I don't need any of this anymore now is this vector normalized no Okay, so I still need to normalize it. All right, I think that should work. And we've got the dead zones configured to be 0.5 by default. Perfect. So I don't know if I wanted to snap back to the position when you're not pressing the aim direction. Like, I don't know if it should snap to the center. So we'll figure that out. I think most let you point wherever you want, but my personal thought is, th is that there's no reason to be able to select an exact position with a controller most times. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. Like, it's the controller is basically just for aiming in a direction. It's not like 
I have any specifically targeted things. Although, now that I think about it, I do have an affix that makes bullets home in on the target that's closest to the cursor. So that would require being able to control the exact position. So maybe I will have to do that. Hello, Chendrak. What's the work that needs to be done in general? I assume that you could get a basic version working by adding controller inputs to the input map. Yeah, it's basically it's basically there. I mean, um, the aiming is not connected to the controller yet, but and the menus don't work with the controller yet. So those are the two big things to do. Anonymous. Get action strength. That will return a zero to one value, uh, which is useful, but the input get vector does that for me, so. Okay. So now, controller direction. So I'm going to do this. Maybe I'll maybe I'll create a private static vector to last controller direction equals vector 2 dot right. And then I'll change this. Oops to last controller direction. And so that way, what I can do is I can say if last controller direction dot length squared is equal to zero, then we can just return. Um, wait a minute, what am I doing? Let's do this var new direction. If new direction dot length squared is equal to zero, well, we'll say uh, greater than zero. Then we're going to say um, last controller direction is equal to new direction. Okay, so that should prevent the cursor from snapping back to the center, which is kind of annoying. Also, I don't know, should there be some interpolation or something? Yeah, maybe there needs to be like interpolation because otherwise it just snaps. Which is not a huge problem, I don't think, but I'll have to study some other games and see what th what their what theirs are like. Okay. So that's working pretty good. <laughs> Obviously, besides the aiming part. So let's see if we can get that working for, for the player here. So... Let's take a look at my player scene and see how that aiming is even working. Here we go, update aim direction. So get global mouse position. So I think the, the sensible thing to do here is gonna be to move the logic that determines how the aiming is working to the player input manager. That's probably gonna be the best, best thing to do. Yeah. There's still some input stuff in the player that should probably be moved to the... Oh wait, no, these are input manager. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna create a new function called input manager um, get aim position or something. So let's do this, public void or public vector two get aim position. Oops. just looking at how my input manager is being used currently so I can match the style here. Oh wait, yeah. Oh, I see. Did I start putting that in the wrong spot? Oh, I did, okay. I was like, where's all this functionality? I gotta put this get aim position in here. Get aim position. All right. So what is the logic that we want to use here?
I have to read up on connection strength. Yeah. Yeah, it's very useful, like I said. Hello, uh, Luigi Sake. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, uh, welcome back. I think you've been here before, right? Hello, Nas Syndrome. Good afternoon to you as well. Okay. So get A in position. Let's just do the really easy uh, situation first, which is um, global input manager dot get controller cursor global position. And I think that's basically it. So we can say return that vector two. Cool. So now in our player, where I'm getting the global mouse position, this update aim direction, we want to say instead input manager dot game get aim position. Update facing. I don't know why this is here. Aim position is equal to Input manager dot get aim position. Perfect. Get global. Okay, so there's no other mouse um, checks in the player. So let's see. Oh, failed to build. Why? Here. Oh. Now let's try it. All right, there we go. We got aiming working. Now I think there's probably going to need to be some aim assist because this is somewhat hard to control. So aim assist is going to be a whole different beast. Oops. And then, yeah, getting the menus to work. So, got a lot of work cut out for me still. That's a bug. That menu should not be able to appear behind that. Wait, why is that even happening? Okay, well, it's not worth um, figuring out now. Well, let me log it as a bug here. And for those that haven't seen, this is sort of, uh, this is my to-do list here. So everything in this to-do column right here is uh, stuff that needs to be done before the demo. So that's kind of where I'm at in terms of development. What are your thoughts on using C-Sharp with Godot? I have a lot of C-Sharp experience, but using it with Godot when I tried like a year or so ago felt wrong and overcomplicated. I mean, it is a little bit of, it is a little bit verbose. So, I mean, if you're, if you're uncomfortable with how verbose it is, then you can definitely use GDScript. GDScript is perfectly capable, obviously. I think it's, I think it's great. Um, GDScript 2.0 in particular. But I don't mind. I mean, there's a bunch of things you can do to make your C-sharp experience a little bit better. Writing a bunch of extension methods for common operations. And I've got a um, Godot Utilities NuGet package, which allows you to do like this, where you can specify a scene attribute and then mark your nodes with node. And then what happens is that this will, um, this will generate Um, how do I even figure this out? Oh. Anyway, this will generate code for you that handles the node retrieval for you. Here. So this is generated code right here. And basically what this does is this assigns every node or every variable that you've marked with the node attribute. It finds it in the scene tree for you automatically using a couple of checks here. So. Things like that. There's other uh, source generators. 
that are also designed to help you. But yeah, so there are things you can do to reduce the verbosity and the complexity of it. Have you tried GD Script and VS Code? Yes, I was using uh, VS Code for a while for GD Script. It was pretty good. But I think the Godot editor is still a little bit faster in terms of GD Script. I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with my VS Code installation because, yeah, maybe the language server is just bogged down for some reason. I don't know. All right, so what's the next thing? What did I say? I, there was something in mind or that I had in mind. I don't remember. So we can do aim assist. We got to get the menus working. That's a big one. So that's going to be a different um, a different experience because when you're in the menu using the controller, there's got to be like a travel speed, right? So right now, this just basically snaps to wherever you're aiming. So there's no travel speed involved. But when you're, when you're in a menu, you're going to need to... It's going to be more like a mouse cursor, right? So that's something that probably we should figure out now. How to make it work in the menus. So what is the cursor doing? Oh, also we should make it work with keyboard and mouse too so that this check is only doing controller checks. So maybe we'll do that first. So we gotta get this working with the keyboard. So we've got the global input manager. So what is the logic we want to do? So if you're using a controller and then you switch to using a mouse, it needs to swap to, um, it needs to swap to using the mouse position instead. So I think the simple thing to do is let's do a public static bool is using controller. Is using controller. And so this is the tricky thing. I need to figure out Hmm, I need to swap between those things somehow. Hmm, I don't even know how I'm going to do that. So, I mean, the simple way to do it is like if you have a controller plugged in, you have to use the controller, but that doesn't sound super, super appealing. Hello, Vidra. How am I liking Rider IDE so far? I like it a lot. Yeah, I like it a lot. I miss my VS code, but um, but Rider is working so much better for C sharp. So. So goodbye. Goodbye, VS code. All right, I think I'm just going to implement this the simple way first. So if is using controller, I'm just going to return controller device index is greater than or equal to zero. We'll get rid of this was controller last used. What is this? Does this not like my naming here? Uh, I'm not putting a prefix. Okay. This wants to be static as well. Okay. We'll make it static. Cool. All right, so we've got this is using controller. Okay. 
So in the player input manager, we'll say get aim position. What we'll do is, is this a node duty? It's not, okay. So I'm gonna do this. If global input manager dot is using controller, then we'll return this. Otherwise, we'll return owner as node 2D. I'm just assuming the owner is a player, so I don't care too much about that, but we'll make it safe anyway. And this needs to be get global mouse position. So now I'm going to have to unplug my controller to make it work. So I can't use my mouse right now, but if I unplug the controller. Oh no, it's not working. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Oh. Okay, so it obviously didn't detect the controller change for some reason. On joy connection changed. Let's do this. Print gd.prints device index and is connected. All right, let's take a look at that. See how this is working. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. Zero and true. Zero and false. Is this device index never being set? So let's do this. Oh, I guess my cursor, wait a minute. I think I know what's wrong. My cursor is still wrong, right? So my cursor here, yeah. So if global input manager dot is using controller, a bunch of places where I have to do the same thing. So that that's making me wonder if there's a better way to even better way to do this. Like if the global input manager should just return either the controller position or the mouse position, I guess there is probably going to be a refactoring opportunity here somewhere, especially when I start trying to make the controller work in the menu. Okay, so I've got this. Mouse doesn't work if I unplug. If I unplug, now I can aim with the mouse. Okay. All right, so that's working. So now let's get the... Uh, let's get the menus working now, which is going to be a whole, whole other thing. So um, obviously there's still a ton of work to do. I'm just trying to get the big blocks of the controller integration in place and then I'll I'll smooth it out and refine it as I go but I just want to get it working at a basic level in all instances all right so let me commit what I've got here so let's call this start work on controller integration or I guess I should call it controller support. Commit and push. All right. So now the menus. How are we going to do the menus? The good thing is that in our player input manager, I already have this concept of locks. And input locks are basically a way of preventing the player from doing standard actions while menus are up. At least I think that's that's what it is. So the thing is, yeah, so the thing is, I'm going to need to basically just change the cursor logic itself.
Mm-hmm. So there's going to be another role for the global input manager. I'm going to need to be able to get like a, a controller cursor velocity or something. And then I'm going to need to update the global position of the cursor, but only if I'm in a menu. Now, I don't really have an explicit piece of data that tells me that I'm, I'm in menu mode. Um, I can kind of infer that by saying if there's locks on the input, then that means that I'm in a menu. And so, for instance, like if I go to my, uh, if I go to my player stats UI, I've got this cursor lock component and the cursor lock component, what it does is it essentially, as soon as it enters or as soon as it's instantiated, it adds a cursor lock. Oh, I guess that's in the cursor here. And then it removes a cursor lock when it's done. Oh, I see. So there's a pointer lock and a cursor lock. Okay, so basically, this is actually going to be simpler than I thought. So if the crosshair is not active, that means that I'm in a menu, and that means that we should change the control scheme. Okay, that should be simple enough then. Perhaps this all should be in the player, uh, player input manager. But again, the thing is the cursor is a scene that's designed to be able to be used in menus. So if you're not in the game, you should still be able to use the cursor like on the main menu, right? So that's kind of why there's separate input handling here versus the player input manager. I could wrap it all in the global input manager, but I'm just going to stick with making it a hodgepodge of different functionality. I've been using uh, Godot Utilities and it's really game changer. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I, I think it's really useful for me at least. Just it's so, it's a little bit more streamlined. Hello, Drufus. Welcome back. Oops. So yeah, um, I'll take a pause right here for a second. If uh, any of you are interested in this game, any new viewers here, you can wishlist Gunforged. Uh, the link is in the description below. And you can also take my Godot 4 Udemy course if you want to learn how to make a game in Godot 4. The links for both of those are in the description below, so check them out. All right. So let's do this. Let's create a public static vector to get controller velocity, I guess. Controller cursor velocity. And basically, I'm going to take this direction here, get this vector. And I'm just going to return this, actually. Do I need to do this? Well, let's do another one. Public static vector to get controller cursor direction. Return this. Get controller cursor direction here and then get controller cursor direction there. But the velocity private const float controller cursor velocity or let's do speed this will have to be an option in an options menu in the future i'm sure but we'll just um do that for now and then let's create a private static vector to controller cursor velocity okay so in here what we're going to do is we're going to say return direction times controller cursor speed. And then uh, what do I want to do here? Okay, well, let's just 
let's just work with that for now. So in here, in the process method, so I've got a couple of different states here, and I might actually switch this to using a state machine. I might actually switch this to using a state machine because I've got this update cursor here, which is being called every time a lock is, is added. And basically I'm saying if the pointer locks is greater than zero, then the pointer takes priority over the cursor, takes priority over the crosshair. Now what I could do is I could just say, you know, create a, a new method here. Private void is in menu. And then we're just gonna return pointer locks greater than zero or cursor locks are greater than zero. Like so. Then what I can do is say if is in menu and then else. But see, like when you start getting branching logic like this with all kinds of like Boolean variables, checking state, this is a good candidate for using a state machine instead. So I may actually do that. Also, this needs to return a Boolean. You know what I like about JavaScript over C Sharp? is you don't need to define the return type. It can infer the return type based on the method body, which is nice. I guess that's TypeScript, technically not JavaScript. All right. So if is in menu, what we're going to do is we're going to say root dot global position plus equals global input manager dot get controller cursor velocity times delta. Does this need to be float? I think so. Float delta. All right. So we're going to need to bound that to the camera or to the window rather. But let's see how that looks. OK, so there's my cursor. So I'm in a menu. I can move the cursor around. I can send it off the screen if I want. It's very slow, but and obviously, we're going to need to add a uh, ability to scroll down here with the uh, with the controller as well. Let's up that speed, though. That's a painfully slow speed. Uh, Four hundred, perhaps. Okay, that feels a little bit more um, satisfying. And this also scales with um, with how much you're pressing the analog stick. So technically you go faster if you go diagonal than if you went left or right by itself, I think. Oh, maybe not. Actually, maybe not, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so I can be very precise with my movements. But the thing about this UI is that all of the buttons are super huge. So it should be relatively easy to to use the controller like this. So now let's try it with uh, when we go into the upgrade screen. Let's see if I can navigate the upgrade screen with no problems here. Yeah, definitely going to need aim assist because this doesn't feel certainly doesn't feel as good as mouse and keyboard. Maybe I'll start the aim assist today. I'm kind of curious to see how that will go. Oh, uh, wait a minute. No. <laughs> okay, so the problem here is that it's still checking the mouse position under the hood. So I think I actually need to... I think I actually need to set the... the mouse position. Can I do that? Uh-oh. Did I encounter a fatal flaw? Okay, let me check uh let me check on the almighty Google to see. G 
get viewport warp mouse. Is that still a thing? That was a 2016 answer. So warp mouse. Input warp mouse. Input warp mouse. Uh, I think I have a feeling I'm going to have some difficulties here. Input. Uh, let's just do this. Warp mouse. Sets the mouse position to the specified vector provided in pixels and relative to an origin at the upper left corner of the currently focused window manager game window. Mouse position is clipped to the limits of the screen resolution or to the limits of the game window if mouse meta is set to confined or confined hidden. It has no effect on Android, iOS, and web. Well, good thing I'm not releasing on those platforms, so can I use that instead? Oh, goodness. Hmm, there's got to be a better way to do this. Let's see. How will aim assist work? That's a great question. That is a great question. There was a... Um, there was a video that I saw on aim assist that was really good. And now, unfortunately, I think I've lost it again. I thought I bookmarked it. I guess I didn't. There was a YouTube channel that had a really good implementation of aim assist. I can't find it now, unfortunately. Gee dang it. Gee dang it. Okay, well, I'll have to look for that later. What exactly am I trying to do? Well, the problem is that I can move the cursor image visually around the screen with the controller, but it's not moving the underlying mouse position. And so it's not registering any mouse events. And I don't even know if this warp position is going to register mouse events. I just don't know if that's true. So we're going to have to see if it does. Input dot warp mouse. Let's try that. I should probably put debug mode on. So I got the debug mode. Let's see what happens. Nope, it's not working unless... Oh, maybe it is working. I guess my mouse warping is wrong. Interesting. Oh, so the cursor object isn't in sync with the true mouse cursor. Yeah, that's a complicated one. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the issue. Doesn't get mouse position, get a vector to mouse position? It does, but the I have the opposite problem where my cursor visual is not where the actual mouse is. So I have to take the mouse and move it and then match the cursor visual to the mouse position. So that's actually probably, um, that's actually probably worth just, well, I guess it's fine. See, now I'm wondering, well, I'm not going to overcomplicate this. We'll just keep it like that. So that is working, but I think it's not. I think it's working with the native window size instead of the resolution. At least that's what I think. So I'm going to actually try that. So I'm going to do a public override void uh, draw.
draw. Do I not have a draw here? Maybe try this. Viewport get wrecked. Size divided by two plus your position. I don't think so. I don't think that's going to work. Because... I believe the docs for Warp Mouse say that it will... So, Warp Mouse is available on a couple different things. If you use the Warp Mouse on the input... Which, this might be a clue, actually. If you use the Warp Mouse on the input, Singleton... Um, the origin is at the upper left corner. Hello, Code Red. Welcome to the stream. Yes, you have the face reveal. <laughs> um, I have a YouTube playlist called Godot Stuff that save videos like that into, so you can find them again quickly. Yeah, I usually bookmark everything, but I, I guess I didn't for that one. Designing a better aim assist for 2D games. That sounds reason- or is that a GDC talk? Because if it's a GDC talk, that's not the one that I'm thinking of. Nope, that's right. Yeah, that is the one I'm thinking of. I will bookmark that. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Jacob. Have you tried to use accumulated input? I don't think that's going to be useful if I, let's see. Yeah, I don't think this is, yeah. Input accumulation is not what I'm looking for. All right, so. Yeah, so warp mouse, but maybe I can use warp mouse. So when you're doing it against the control, it's it's against the control's origin. When you do it against the viewport, it is in the coordinate system of the viewport. So I think I want to use viewport warp mouse instead of input warp mouse. I think then, then it will start working, so I don't have to worry about... Um, Dealing with native resolution differences. Let's see. Input. Yeah, so I want to do get viewport dot warp mouse. I think that will work. Let's see. Come on, give me some enemies to slaughter. There we go. All right. So I just needed to use the warp mouse on the get viewport. So that's working. Um, I can move the mouse off the screen, though, so that's not good. All right. Can I actually click now? That's the question. I can't. So let's figure out how to do that. Oops. I clicked with the actual mouse. So let's go to input map. Click left. Oh, the left. Hmm, okay. So the, the thing is on mouse and keyboard, I'm using the left mouse button for menu interaction and for shooting. But on a controller, I don't want to do that because that's the left shoulder button. So in any UI element, I want to use, instead of click left, I want to use, or maybe I should split up the shoot and the click events. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to rename this to shoot left and shoot right. Cool. And then I'll add a new action, click left. 
And here, it's going to be the same for the mouse, but it's also going to be... Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> Button zero. So Xbox A. Okay. And so now I need to go through where I, wherever I'm using click left. And I need to change this. So this one is... This one should be... That's click left. That's right. This one should be shoot left. And I believe this should be shoot right. Change those both to shoot. This needs... That's click left. That's fine. I think the rest of these are fine. Yeah. So now let's do the same for click right. Okay. Cool. I think I fixed all of them. So let's see if that works. So shooting still works. Works with the mouse as well. All right, let's do this. Come on, it's not working. What did I do wrong? So when I click A on the keyboard, or not on the keyboard, on the controller, it's not working. Interesting. I wonder if it's just not working, generally speaking. Hmm. Very interesting. Input map, Xbox A, all devices, click left. Did some of my click left not? On GUI input. Oh, interesting. Maybe the GUI input is not being triggered. I think maybe the GUI input is not being triggered by this input event for some reason. Why would that be the case? Well, let's print the input event. This is going to clutter up the screen big time. Tessel, Tess eight lers video is something I can replicate. Is the wavy effect a shader? Yes, it is. You can create a static read only dictionary to make it easier to change in one place. I could, but then I'm maintaining the Godot input map and my own input map, right? And the dictionary doesn't help if you're renaming things because then your names will get out of sync. Cannot remove the child node. Why is this not working all of a sudden? Okay, I'm going to close all these. Why did this start breaking? What happened? Add animation library. P animation library is null. What? All I did was add this print statement. What's going on? Something very wrong just happened. All right, I'm going to try this. Restart Godot. Did I just do something catastrophic on accident? I don't know what's going on. Why did this change?
Oh boy, that's not good. There should have been no changes to the dungeon den, I don't think. So I'm going to roll that back. And we're going to run this. I don't know why this started breaking. What happened? There's nothing here that I changed. These all got changed too. I don't think I changed anything about the player either. So I think Godot just like did something. Let's remove that. And let's run this. All right, we're back in business. Okay, Godot did something weird to my player scene. Thank goodness for version control. Could be a problem with the release candidate. Maybe it's a regression of some sort. Because I switched to the release candidate. All right. So I need to put back that print statement. Alright, I should put debug mode back on. I think I reverted that change on accident. Well, not on accident. I did it intentionally try to fix the issue. Dang it. Definitely gonna need some, uh, some aim assist. I, I can't believe how terrible controllers are for shooter games. Like, aim assist is basically mandatory. That's crazy. Come on. Okay, we've got a bunch of input event mouse motion being printed, but I don't see anything being printed when I press A. So, now we gotta come up with a creative solution for that. So, Is the proper way to do this, can I just send an event? There's a way to send an event, right? So I think what I'm gonna have to do is detect the key press or the button press, the A button on the controller, but then send a mouse event instead. Because I'm relying on the GUI input signals for my GUI elements, and I don't know why that's not exactly working with with controllers, I guess. I guess they doesn't support GUI events. So I gotta figure out how to send an event here. I'm gonna have to look it up. Send input event Godot. Depends on skill, it's harder to track down small deltas with your finger. Yeah. So I'm just looking. Let's see if we can find an answer to this. How to create an input event. Oh, that's not, yeah, that's not right. That's just how to add a new input map. Here we go. 
you can create and dispatch an input event for cases like this. So we got to create a new input event, get tree dot input event. Is that still the same here? Parse input event. Oh, I guess I just need to use this. Feeds an input event to the game can be used to artificially trigger input events from code. Okay. So this is what I want to do. I guess I'll handle that from the cursor. So what I'll do is I'll do public override void unhandled input. And then we'll do an input event here. If EVT dot is action pressed. What did I call that? Click left, right? I think so. Yeah, click left. Okay, click left. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to create it. Well, we want to do this. We want to say if is in menu. And I think I need to set get viewport.set input as handled. Okay, we'll do that. And then we're going to create a new event. Or do I need to create a new event? Can I just... I think I might just be able to send this one back through the tree. Uh, let's try it input dot parse input event is this going to create an infinite loop i don't think so because it should be handled well if it's not handled then it might create an infinite loop so that won't work but i'm going to see if it works anyway I'm trying to simulate a mouse click with the controller yeah that's exactly it because it doesn't, the GUI elements don't detect the mouse click. Okay, so it crashed like I was expecting it to, or like I suspected it would. Um, so, or not crashed, it froze because of infinite loop. How am I going to do this? Uh, maybe there's a better way to do it. So handle GUI input with controller Godot. I'll just Google this real quick. All right, let's see. You should probably use the unhandled input event method to handle input in the game and input event to handle input in the UI. So I think this doesn't, this shouldn't be the same input then. So what I'll do is I'll use the, um, the roll button here, which is joypad button A and I'll remove it from here. This is gonna be a little bit messy here, but whatever gets it to work. So in here, what I'll do is I'll say, if roll is pressed, then we're going to send a new input. So we're gonna say var uh, new event, or let's just call it mouse event, I guess, equals new input event. Mouse event dot uh, new mouse input event, maybe? Input event mouse. Okay, I guess I can't do that. Why can't I create a new input event? New input event action. Okay. Mouse event dot action is equal to click left. Mouse event dot pressed is equal to true. Okay, and then we'll send that mouse event over. All right, let's see if that works. Uh, I probably want to remove that GD print. That's spamming a bunch of things too. Where where is that even at? GD print. 
Or did I remove it? Oh, I guess I removed it. Alright. Alright, let's see. Nope, still doesn't work. I have a feeling this is related to how the GUI input is being handled. Because what this says is that this generates a node.input calls, but I'm listening to GUI input. So one thing to do, passive ingot selector. Let's just do this. Let's just try this. Public override void input. Can I listen to input like this? So I'm just going to call on GUI input here. EVT. That's probably not going to work. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work because the on GUI input is related to inputs that specifically happen against this GUI element, but I think this this input handler is more general, so it will handle input from anywhere. So that's not going to work. Um, what am I supposed to do? I don't know how I'm supposed to get my GUI elements to click. Um, let's try this. Send GUI input event from code. Good deal. Hmm, interesting. I don't know what's going on here. Hmm, any other ideas? I feel like the way I'm doing this is convoluted, but I don't know why Godot wouldn't support GUI input with controllers naturally. I'm pretty sure it does, so I'm kind of confused. Let's see. UI accept is joypad button zero, device zero. But that only works if something is focused. So maybe therein lies the hint. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to focus the input. So in my um, passive ingot selector, perhaps on mouse entered, I have to focus it. So can I manually focus it? A control. Grab focus. Is this what I need to do? Use this method together with callable call deferred. Nah, gonna ignore that one. All right, so on mouse entered, let's do um, grab focus. And now, perhaps, I don't need to do all this fancy stuff right here. Where was that fancy stuff? Oh, it was here. Let's just remove this for now. Alright, let's see if that works. So if I just grab the focus every time you hover over something... Maybe that'll work. Input event mouse button. That's not going to work, I don't think. Because the way I'm doing it is the more general form, which is to send an action. But I can try the input event mouse button. 
I don't think it's going to work though, primarily because it's um, it's not sending GUI input events. This isn't working either. Why is this not working? All right, let's try the. Uh, I don't think the input event mouse button is going to work, but we'll try it anyway. Um, I guess, do I have to change the position? Let's just set the position to... New Vector to 100, 100, just so that it will select the first item. Okay, let's try it. Someone was asking about that for the roguelike ship game and did not fix it after suggestions that people gave. Hope to get to fix your issue. Someone was asking about what it... Oh, the issue with mouse filters. Oh, I see. Yeah, so this mouse event... Input mouse button is not working. The issue is not that I'm not using the correct action. The issue is that this is not being sent as a GUI input event. So this doesn't work. No form of this is going to work. But I don't know why grabbing the focus doesn't work either. Maybe some elements just can't have focus grabbed. Steals the focus, focus mode. So maybe, maybe you're right, Luigi, here. Maybe there's something to do with the mouse filter. Although, I don't have a mouse filter disabled for... Um, for the passive selection ingot. This passive ingot selector right here. So this is the thing that you can actually um, interact with. And it... Um, focus mode. All. Let's try that. So I changed focus mode all. And then the mouse filter is pass, which should be fine but I can play with that as well. I wonder if I can do this. Here we go, passive reward selection screen. Yeah, so the focus is not being The focus is not even working. Let's try changing. I mean, is it? There's something very wrong here about my understanding of how focus mode works. So UI accept, if I edit this, all devices. What do you mean, Nami Nuz? Nam nam nuz. Do you really need that more general approach? I don't know what you mean by a more general approach. So that didn't do anything. You're supposed to be able to use the joypad. You're supposed to be able to use the joypad for UI accept, and that will work when you've got focus. Um, but that's not working here. Passive ingot selector, grab focus. Input event is action, click left. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking that grab focus should work.
let's try <laughs> doing what the docs recommend, which is to call deferred. I'm sure that's not going to work. Um, I don't even think there's a way for me to... Well, let's just try it. I mean, yeah, I don't know. How do I even... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Grab focus. Has focus. Focus mode. Focus access mode for the control. None, click, or all. Only one control can be focused at the same time and will receive keyboard, gamepad, and mouse signals. Well, it's not receiving gamepad signals, so something's wrong. It's probably, I guess it's not focused. It just must not be focused. So let me try this. So if I say, whoops. If I tell this to grab focus, and then I say, um, get tree dot create timer point one dot timeout plus equals gd dot print has focus. So I'm gonna wait a couple of frames, then see. Do I have the focus? Let's just shrink this window so I can see. So yeah, it does have focus. It's printing true a bunch of times. So there's something intercepting the A button. There must be something intercepting the A button because this element still has focus. Can you send a mouse click via C sharp? I tried to do that. Yeah, we were trying to do that. But um, when you send an input through like via code, it doesn't seem to register GUI input. Now, maybe it does, and my my input just wasn't correct, but I'm using the, the UI accept here. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so the reason it's not working is because this is UI accept, and this is click left. So I need to either listen to, but the click left didn't have the joypad button. Okay. So it was just a dumb mistake here. Also, this revert action didn't work. Or it reverted something. All devices, device zero, just put that back, okay. So I need to listen for click left. So I was getting confused here. So the focus mode is working. It is grabbing the focus, but it's not, um, not able to detect the click left because there was no action there. So I guess what I could do is I could yeah, I don't. I guess I don't need to send an action through the tree anymore. I should probably just be testing in the other scene, but YOLO. There we go. Look at that. And so now, of course, none of these are working, but I know how to fix the issue now. I just need to grab the focus mode when mouse is entered, which means I have to update basically all of my UI to support focus mode in order to get this to work. So I know how to make it work now, so that's good. So let's fix these up then. We got it. So yeah, this, I think the, yeah, this almost worked. 
but yeah this almost worked but it it must not send it via GUI input because there's um I mean this is pretty much what the docs say to do and it didn't work so anyway we have a path forward now so let's do the reforge ingot um when the mouse is entered, we need to grab focus. Okay. And then the gold ingot as well. We need to grab focus here. Okay. And then... Um, what? What else? The assembled gun ingots selector. We want to grab the focus here. All right, so that should be able to get us through those menus. So I should be able to play through the game now. I won't be able to interact with the shop or any other things. Okay, so we got Reforge. That's not working. I've got some errors here. What are these errors? Oh, goodness. This control can't grab focus. Use the focus mode to allow the control. Okay, so I also need to go to my passive, um, my assembled gun ingot. This needs to be able to grab focus mode. So let's just search focus. Let's do all. Yeah, I guess I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's necessary, but do I even, hold on a second. This gold card. Yeah, I don't think I need that anymore. Get rid of that. All right. So the gold ingot here, focus mode all, and then the assembled gun ingot. Did I change this one already? Ingot selector. Oops. This one all. Cool. Um, what else? So I did the reforge ingot. I did. Did I do the reforge ingot? I don't even remember. No, I didn't. Okay. So now I spoke too soon before, but now it should work. Oh, interesting. I wasn't able to click on the middle one. So there's a little bit of flakiness in terms of detecting the hovering. So I'm going to need to figure out that as well. Okay, so it's working at a basic level. Let me just try... Let me just try this now. Okay, so it's a little bit flaky sometimes. So I just need to figure out how to forcibly update the mouse hover position, I think. Maybe I can do something hacky, like if I warp it to like negative 10,000 and then warp it back to the real position each frame, maybe that will cause the input to forcibly update. And I don't have to worry about dealing with it. There we go. And now I can look at my inventory here. And I can drop 10 gold into the well. Got my zap passive. Excellent. All right. Looking good. First time it doesn't count as a focus because it's already on that. Yeah. Well, that's well, the mouse entered signal it works when you're using a mouse. Like if you use your mouse in the middle of the screen, um, or maybe it doesn't. 
In any case, if I do this, see how it, as soon as I move it, it gets detected as a mouse entered. So if I do this and I set my mouse right here, if I'm using a, a normal mouse, if I move it, the cursor like this, it should trigger. But that's not happening with the controller. So if I remove the controller, oh, and now I can't. Okay, now this is not updating. Okay. So I removed the controller and the cursor position wasn't updating. Right, because there's this is in menu. And so this needs to be a state machine, I'm sure. But let's just do that. So let's see if this works. So if I leave my mouse in the middle of the screen when I talk to this, which now isn't working for some reason, what is happening? Godot is just like screwing up everything about my game. Interact, where's my interaction? Yeah, my, my interact It's just gone, yeah. Uh, I guess maybe I accidentally deleted the uh, the keyboard key or something. Something's going weird here. I'm kind of paranoid because Godot screwed up my game to the point where it's crashing. So I'm like, what else is it doing? Okay, now let's try it. Okay, so if I leave my mouse here and I move it just a little bit, you can see that as soon as I provide any input, it gets highlighted. That's not happening with the controller. So I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to go into my cursor here. And where I'm doing this warp mouse, I'm going to call warp mouse twice. So I'm going to do vector two dot vector two dot. Oh my goodness. Vector two dot one times negative 1000. And then I'm going to warp it back and I'm going to see if that, uh, if that triggers an update. Now the input isn't working. Yeah, that's not working. Why is that not working? It's like it won't register the input. Dang, I was really hoping that hack would work. Okay, well, that didn't work. So I'm going to need to figure out how to get those inputs to update immediately if you have something hovered. Because that's very noticeably um, not a great experience. But anyway. So I'm just going to comb through here to make sure. I am not using the, the cursor for controlling input. I mean, it's the visual that represents where the mouse is under the screen, but it's like the, the mouse is what's being used to control the input. Um, are you asking why it's a cursor on controller? If, if you're asking why it's a cursor when using a controller, it's because that's easier to do. 
than to make it an actual like controller first experience. Okay. Use grab focus for um, for controller input, I guess. Stage those. Cool, yeah, so I'm gonna need to do some more experimentation and figure out what exactly is going on. See if I can get the controller to work better. So what am I using the controller input? What makes it easier? Just the fact that I don't have to design a UI that can indicate to the user like which elements are selected with the controller. I guess I kind of already have it in this instance, but navigating these kind of menus, I would have to indicate like, here's what's focused here, here's what's focused here, um, and all that good stuff, right? Focus neighbors. Well, that's the point. Like, I would have to design all of these elements to be, to have focus neighbors, to have focus states. And I don't want to do that. So that's why it's easier. I have more complicated UIs too, like the, what you call it, the shopkeeper. So maybe, maybe if I have time or if I feel up to it, I'll do a proper controller UI implementation. But yeah, I just, my, my sole focus is getting the demo out. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna call the stream right there. That was a good start on controller implementation. Lots of work to do. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Thanks all for bouncing ideas off of me um, and brainstorming with me on how to accomplish this. Getting there, but still lots of work to do. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the stream. If you're interested, you can check out my Udemy course. The link for that is in the description. And uh, you can wishlist this game, Gunforged, on Steam if you're interested in that as well. So the links for all those are in the description. And uh, yeah, thank you, Luigi. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hope you all enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next stream or the next video. All right, bye-bye everyone.